We're here with Andy Wills of Matarola. He's come direct from the USA, VP of Engineering. And I think he's the right guy to talk to us about hardware because we cover hardware and nitroware.net. He's got some nice toys with us, uh, toys with him out at the Moto Z launch. And Andy's going to give us an overview of what we can see for Motorola going to 2017. Yep. So show us what you've got, Andy. Yep. So hey, guys. Uh, yeah, Andrew Wells here, um, originally from Australia. Um, yeah, so we're launching the, the Moto, <laughs> Moto Z family products today with Moto Mods. Um, you know, if you take a look at mobile phones out there in the market today, they're all pretty much the same. You know, they got like slightly different cameras, slightly different displays, slightly different batteries, but they're all the same. So we wanted to do something totally different. And uh, rather than just have applications that just use Android or iOS to give their functionality, we wanted to give applications the ability to write applications that actually use new bits of hardware here. So you can see here, we've got a Moto Z product here. Um, and this is a Moto Mod here. And you can attach this to a magnetic, magnetic connection to the back of the phone here. And this one here is actually a special one. This is actually our developer kit. Um, so what this developer kit is, is it's uh, a tool that we're open sourcing to uh, hardware software developers to be able to uh, you know, quickly and easily prototype their new idea. So in the box, you'll get a beautiful Little mod, it's got the little brain of a, a mod in there. Uh, it has an empty circuit board here, which you can uh, solder your favorite, favorite component on, and then write a little bit of uh, software uh, using our open sourced examples, and you can be up and running with your small project and an idea. So you can carry it around in your pocket. There's a little, it comes with a little case as well. Um, so, you know, for the geeks out there that like to experiment and play with new things, this is the, the ultimate Christmas gift, I would think. Um, so, Andy, why why have you done it as a backplate instead of, say, for example, we have a USB breakout box? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you do it, if you were to do it with the USB, um, you'd obviously make the, the bottom of the phone quite a lot bigger. Well, I mean, there's a number of ways to do it, but yeah. we're just talking. But could have also, a cord or but something. But it's also not low power because with USB devices, the uh, main processor will be up up and running the whole time. You can't put it in uh, into low power sleep okay. mode. Okay. And then uh, USB. So basically, doesn't... because the stack, the USB stack will be running. Otherwise, if you put it on the back, it can get to the low level yeah, GPIO so and all those different things exactly. like that. All so right. we've got like uh, you know everything from. A a very simple set, set of I2C buses, spy buses, we've got USB 2, USB 3, we've got MyDP supported, we've got like every electrical engineering interface known to man coming through the phone, and the system's been designed in a way to make sure it's uh, low power. Okay, when you say open source, this has a very, let's say, elastic meaning in the phone sure. community. Yep. So, to be specific, when we're talking about open source, how specifically because a lot of the Qualcomm stuff is blobs, it's closed. Sure, yeah. And there's other, you know, there's other proprietary technologies inside the sure. phone that you know might be available blob or limited source. And you know, it's a basically yeah. it's a kind so of. So what words. we've uh, so what we've done is there's a little microprocessor on the Moto Mod that's like a little brain of whatever prototype you want to build. Obviously, it's in Motorola's interest for any developers to be able to build their own toy or build their own prototype or idea. Um, so we actually have open source, you know, the, the software and the tools that someone would need to be able to start with a blank, a blank little Moto Mod processor and uh, you know create their own. So the purpose of the, the, the device is. Is a development platform to make extensions for the phone. It's not something, for example, to hack into the phone or exactly. do yeah. different, you know, various, yeah. you know, because so, some viewers that might see open source and they go, oh, yeah. And no, we have a, to be careful how we describe. It's been this open source to give developers the capability to extend the functionality of their phone. Um, so you know, we've also written extensions to Android, so new APIs on the Android side to be able to allow you to communicate with the the unique hardware that you've installed. What's going to happen to this? APIs that they're going to be mainlined and other people can oh, we'll use them on to, other uh, hardware we'll or how that it work. happens over time but you know right now so those APIs at the moment they're just Motorola the Motorola domain, yeah. so you know you get different Motorola phones those APIs will be there but there won't be another it's exactly yeah. it's part of our it's, it's, it's a, it's a Motorola.com uh, you know Android extension but it's obviously the same across all of that couple, couple more things so for some other vendors, they've you know they've done sort of hybrid devices. You know, Intel's doing some Arduino compatible type stuff, and there's some others doing, you know, half half. Yeah. Why didn't you guys go to another company and go look? 
We, we make mods for our phone. You guys are an open source expert. Make us some sort uh, we, of we experimental actually, kit. So we've actually worked with, there's a, there's, a, there's a group of people called Element 14. I don't know whether you guys yep, know them. Distributor. Yeah, distributor. Yeah, so we actually worked with a lot of their guys to actually, early on, we actually worked with some of their key guys to make sure that we were designing a lot of these sure. the tools to make sure it was done in the right way. So we've worked with those guys in the UK. And another thing earlier, you gave us a presentation and you said that you as your, your, you know, you're in charge of engineering and you said you're working on future phones, you know, you're working on 2018. When you design a phone, how do you take into account developments that are not made aware of you? For example, you know, the die processors, you know, every year we're getting, yeah. we're getting new nodes, chipsets will change. Yeah. How do you even take that into that account when designing a phone, or do you just ignore it and you design the, well, like I, the shell? Yeah, have, and we have teams that work with all the vendors. We know, I, we know where all of our major vendors are going from a technology standpoint. We know typically when we're going to be able to intersect their technology roadmaps and how they map back to our product roadmaps. And we try, we actually try to even influence their roadmaps to, to intersect with our products. So we spend a lot of time actually. Yeah, well, there for example, you know, we're at the moment we're on 14 nanometer fin fret with the Qualcomm 020, and we're going to go to 7 and so on. And those things affect peak, affect performance. Of course. How do you take those into account without actually having the silicon when you're designing the uh, phone? We work, we work very closely with guys like Qualcomm to model out what the thermal. Okay, so they would have some sort of uh, yeah, engineering so model, and they'll, you know, you work it out on the simulator, and you go, okay, this is. Um, yeah. And also, you were telling us earlier because this is the 20, you have a liquid cooling solution. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? It's basically a heat pipe that runs okay. up and down down the ribbon. Yeah, we've had this we've had this problem with other phone vendors in Cork and they keep saying liquid cooling but it's really it's a, a heat, heat pipe. pipe. Yeah. It's a heat pipe. Well, it's a heat pipe with, with water inside. Yeah. Okay, so that's it's different different words for uh, Look, look, we can't. I, my publication covers speed so hard. My readers are a bit picky, so there's been some. No, you, can, you can call it a heat pipe if you want. There's been some spurious ads in the showing, you know, different flows and all that sort yeah, of. You thing. understand what the technology is. Okay. Um, I had an opportunity to have a look at get my hands on the Z. Yeah. Okay. And I'm very impressed with how thin it is and how light it is. Now we have, as we said, we have the Qualcomm 20 in there. We have a medium-sized battery. The player has a bigger battery. Um, what has been the biggest factor to getting the size down? Is it because the process is getting smaller? And uh, lots for example, of, lots I'm of, filming this on a G3, and G3 is probably twice as thick. And it's not really that much older. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's choice of materials. So we're using a different type of aluminium um, construction, which is uh, actually gives us a lot more strength, um, which allows us to go thinner. Um, the steel that we use on the back plate of the phone is actually a different grade of steel, which allows us to go thinner than we typically go with a, a phone. Uh, we do clever things with the way that we lay out the piece CB boards uh, to, to make it uh, make it thinner. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things we do to basically use of different materials and different different more expensive components. What would you say would be the big things going forward? I mean, processor technology is a given. You know, we have Moore's law, we have Amdahl's law, we have all these different things. Sure, yeah. That's you know, we're yeah. going to have more and. The way the industry is going, you know, we have this core war, you know, there's some people advocating for big cores, some people advocating for small cores, some people mixed, you know, the processor side, but in general, what, what, what's the future going forward for phones? I mean, how, you can't really, can't really get thinner, can we? Yeah, I think that, that's partly what we hear from Mo with Moto Mods today, is uh, we, we really want to um, give the community the opportunity to, to get involved and, and actually create that future with us. So rather than up until now, you know, if you're a guy that wanted your phone to do A, B and C, or wish your phone had A, B or C piece of hardware, um, now you actually have the tools and capability without having to spend millions and millions of dollars doing your own development to actually add that in. So right. our goal is to actually... Well, I'm, uh, look, I haven't had a chance to look at the development kit, but I mean, you know, it's it's going to be an uh, interesting topic to discuss, you know, what the users can mod and can't mod, you know, in terms of... that's But that's fine, you know, that's what you expect. So it's going to be interesting to look at it. But, you know, we've covered half to, uh, hardware. Now... Um, where's things going with software? You know, the, what the, what I'm finding is the, um, the thinking in the industry of reusers with all these things. Everyone's worried about where Android is going. Yeah. In terms of updates and in terms sure. of the patching and you know, you guys use a pretty much close to ASAP operating system, but you have some motor bits in there. Yeah. And obviously, that's still inhibit somebody from patching and you also have regional issues and carry issues and yeah. so it's how, part of the, how's the way, how, how where's OS going I mean I'm not talking yeah, about so in general still, terms so still, we still very much you know build all our software around AI, AISP it's actually in our interest to do that um, by doing that we're able to leverage you know software patches from everybody from Qualcomm to Google to make our, all of our products better so that's still our strategy 
but you know when there is something that we want to innovate in you know we will we will make you know small localized yeah. changes but the way that we make those changes we go through a very rigorous yeah. uh, process to and make sure that that's not, the next thing I'm to for example say for example and uh, Google announces uh, in a, an exploit fi- now, next day exploit yeah. fix they're gonna patch their devices the pixel next very quickly maybe in a week yeah. but you guys might take months do you no, see any change in the future? You know, any I change think, in the future? How that's going to work? Or that's we can't do much about it. That's how things work. Yeah, something that we, we always work with, just like Google does, work with the carriers to to kind of get through their process. But there's there's different uh, carrier processes for security updates and some of those things that are that are important to consumers. I don't know how much you can comment on this, but from our point of view, you know, we see the carriers as a big roadblock in Australia. And, you know, you're from the you know you're from another region, and I'm not sure how things differ there, but. Is there anything that manufacturers can do or maybe the industry can do as a whole to remove this roadblock and at least restrict our roadblock? I, I think just everybody's got to work together you know, more and more closely to, to bring, in, bring, all, bring, bring this all together. Yeah. Um, is there any um, what message you want to tell our users who are going to the Z? You know, obviously, as you said, you know, it's not exactly a brand new product. There's been some press about it. And some users might be, you know, they might have some inhibitions about the higher model not having a headphone port yeah. and these sorts of these sorts of small niggling things that have affect different yeah. different brands of phones. So, what message would you like to send to our users? Because we have our own point of view, have your own point of view. Yeah, as the I, think, I think just stepping back, you know, from your audience, like uh, you know, a bunch of bunch of really clever clever people that you know design hardware and write software. You know, this is the phone for you guys. Uh, we we actually think. You are the you are the exact audience that would totally get into this. I encourage you to go and go and buy one, grab a development kit, and have a bunch of fun doing new and new and new 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 things. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, no problem, mate. Yeah.